There's not a minute of our life should stretch without some pleasure. New what sport tonight? High rank and queen. To everything that comes to chai, to laugh, to weep. No messenger but that, and all alone. Go on through the streets, and know the qualities of people. Oh. Come, my queen. Last night did you desire? <laughs> Speak not to us. <laughs> Her legs were so and what else more importantly to know, 
For them. There is a great spirit gone. Thus did I desire it. What our contempt doth often hell from us, we wish it out again. She is good being gone. I must with this enchanting queen break off ten thousand ills more than the harms I know. My hide is not hatch. How now, Mr. Barbers? Oh, that's my pleasure, sir. I must be paid from hence. Why then we kill our women? We see how mortal Anna comes this to them. If they suffer our departure, we <coughs> dash the word. I must be gone. Oh, under a compelling occasion. Let women die. It were pity to cast them away for nothing. Though, between them and the great cause, there is still nothing. Cleopatra, could you make the least noise of this? Dies instantly. I have seen her die twenty times upon far poor moment. There is a meddling death which makes some loving act upon her. She has such a celebrity in dying. She is cunning, past master. Alexa, no. Her passions are made of nothing but the finest part of pure love. We cannot call her waters and wines, sighs and tears. The greatest storms and our tempers and our months can report. Would I never see her? Well, sir, you have then not left seen a wonderful piece of work, which you would have been blessed with it would have discredited your trouble. Fulvia's dead. Sir? Fulvia's dead. Fulvia? Dead. I give the gods a medical sacrifice. Your grief is found with consolation. Your old smock brings forth a new petticoat. No more light answers. Let our officers have notice what we purpose. I'll tell the cause of our expedience to the Queen, and get her leave to part. Not alone the death of Fulvia do strongly speak to us, but the letters from our many contriving friends in Rome petition us at home. Get that off. I shall do it.
queen, the strong necessity of time demands our services a while, but my full heart remains in use with you. Our Italy shines over with civil swords, my more particular, and that which with you should save my goat, is Fulvia's death. Though age from folly could not give me freedom, it does from childishness. Can Fulvia die? She's dead, my queen. My sovereign let her read. Where be the sacred vials that should fill with sorrowful water? Now I see. I see. In Fulvia's death, her received mine shall be. Quarrel no more, but be prepared to know the purposes I bear, which are or cease as I give thy advice. Oh, cut my lips, child. Come. But let me. I am quickly ill and well. So Antony loves. I pray you, turn aside and weep for Fulvia, and bid adieu to me, and say the tears are for Egypt. Good now, play one last scene of excellent dissembling, and as it looked like, perfect honour. You'll heat my blood no more. Oh, you can do better yet, but this is meatly. Now buy my sword. And target. Still, he mends. But this is poor. I'll leave you, lady. And what is yours? What well, You and I must part. But that's not it. You and I have loved. But that's not it. That you know well. Oh, my oblivion is very Antony, and I am forgotten. <laughs> Though your royalty is idleness for subject, I should take you for idleness itself. Forgive me, sir. The gods must go with you. Be deaf to my unpitied folly. Upon your soul sits laurel victory. And smooth success be strewn beneath your feet. <laughs> Let us go. Come. Our separation so abides and flies. But thou residing here goes yet with me. And I, hence pleasing, remain here with you. Away. <laughs> See, Lepidus, and henceforth know it is not Caesar's natural vice to hate. Our great competitor of Alexandria, this is the news he drinks, pitches, and waits for Lampedusa and rebels. You may find there a man who is abstract of all faults. The two men follow. I must not think there are. Evil's in utter dark and all for his goodness. His faults in him seem as the spots of heaven, what he cannot change and what he chooses. Anthony. Leave thy lascivious way sails. Thou shalt drink the stale of horses in the gilded puddle. Thy pallet did thy dame the roughest berry on the rudest hedge. <coughs> Yea, like the slag when snow the pastured sheets, the bark of trees thou browsed. On the Alps it is reported that thou shalt eat strange flesh, and all this, and it ruins thy honour that I speak it now, was born so much like a soldier, that thy cheek was so much as lank not. Tis pity of him. Let his shames quickly drive him to Rome. It is time we twain to show ourselves in the field. And to the end we assemble and meet a council. Evil thrives in our idleness. Oh, 
Ring of Egypt tail. Concern you not. I must be laughed at. If or nothing or little, I just see myself offended. And with you, chiefly in the world more laughter. And I shall want to name you derogatively, and to sound your name if not concerned me. My being in Egypt, Caesar, what was it to you? No more me residing here at Rome be to you in Egypt. I wrote to you while writing Alexandra. And you did pocket up my letters, and the taunt to jar my missive out of audience. He fell upon me here admitted uh, that three kings, kings, I had newly feasted, and was warned of what I was in the morning. <laughs> but next day I found him and told him of myself, which is as much to have asked his pardon. Let this man be nothing but strife. Be content to question. Why? I've broken the arch of your oath, which you shall never have time to jar me with. Not see. Let him speak, Phidias. The honour he talks on now is sacred, supposing that I lacked it. But on Caesar, the subject of my oath. To lend me arms and aid, when I require them, to which you have both denied. Neglected, rather. My honesty shall not make for my greatness. Give me leave, Caesar. Speak to these. Thou hast a sister on the mother's side, admired Octavia. Great Mark Antony is now a widower. Say not so, Phidias. If Cleopatra heard you, were proof as well as her of rashness. I'm not married, Caesar. Let him speak further. 
To hold you in perpetual amity. To make you brothers. To knit your hearts with an unslipping knot. Take Antony to Octavia, his wife, whose beauty claims no more worse a husband than the best of men. By this marriage, all little jealousies which now seem great, and all great fears which now import their dangers, would mean nothing. Will Caesar speak? Not till he hears of Antony, he starts to set a war. What power is in Phidias? If I would say Phidias, be it so, to make this good? The power of Caesar, and his power onto Octavia. <laughs> This good purpose, which so fairly shows, dream of impediment. Take my hand, further this act of grace, and from this hour let the hearts of brothers govern in our loves, and sway our great designs. There's my hand, a sister I bequeath you, who no brother did ever love so dearly. Let her live to join our kingdom and our hearts, and then follow our love together. So well digested. You stayed well by the it. Aye, sir. We did seek dead continents and made the night light with a uh, drinking. <laughs> Eight wild boars were to hold at breakfast at twelve thousand that. Is this true? This was but a fly by an eagle. We had much more monstrous matter of feast, which worthily deserved noting. She is the most triumphant lady of Portby Square by. When she first met Mark Anthony. She passed upon his heart with the river of Seagulls. Has she appeared indeed? I will tell you. The barge she sat in, like a burnished throne, bent on the water. The poop, sweet and gold. The purple says, the soap of that the winds and love sink with them. The oars, the silver. Which the tune of flutes kept strong, and made the water which they beat. You can't ask her. The brass arrows of their strokes, impeccable description. Oh, as she lie in her pavilion, cloth of gold, or tissue on that picturing of Venus, where we see the fancy out but nature. On each side her stood pretty, pretty good boys. Like smiling cupids with divers coloured fans, whose wind seemed to glow the delicate cheeks in which they did cool, and what they undid, did. did. Oh, right for Anthony. Shh! A gentlewoman, like the Nereides, so many mermaids tendered her in the eyes and made their beds adorning. At the helm, a seeming mermaid steers the circle tackle that swelled with those flower soft hands. The daily friendly office. From the barge, a strange invisible scent hits the adjacent wharves. And Antony, enthroned in the marketplace, did sit alone, whistling. <laughs> Antony said to her, If I'd attend supper, she replied, you better he came. 